This is the integrated math two practice test for tin ready. We're in subpart three, and this is question twenty five in the seventeen eighteen test. Who knows? The question says Ashley owns a bike rental shop in Arizona. She recorded the high temperature and the amount of money she earned from bike rentals for fifteen different days during the summer, and the graph shows the data. So I, I look here and I get a general feel for Ashley's business. It looks like there's a prime time or prime temperature for people wanting to rent a bike around 300 it seems uh, and we're dealing with 95 degree temperatures then so apparently if it gets below 85 people in Arizona don't ride bikes or who knows I don't know it brings out a different crowd maybe it gets so hot that they just want to move to get the wind what I'm going to do is get a general picture of the shape something like this so to me, that looks like it's going to be quadratic because it has this feel to it. That's uh, x squared. Now, what can I say about that quadratic uh, to get a better feel for the overall sh shape of the picture? I can say that it's going down. So my a value, so if I was looking at a um, vertex form of the equation, so if I had this, this is sorry not to vertex form standard form I'd be looking for something with a negative a if I was doing it in vertex form again I'd be looking for something that starts out with a negative m does not do that so I'm gonna say that's probably out because the term doesn't have a negative in front of it it's facing down if it had a positive here then we would be seeing this so the feature doesn't match this one, if I do x times x, it's not going to give me a negative. The value in front of x squared term, because it would just be x squared there, is not going to be negative. So I'm going to say that r is also incorrect. So we have that in play. What I could consider doing here is going ahead and performing, uh, you know, foiling this out, but I want to see what I can fish out of this and see if it works. It says that the um, vertex components that I'm going to use are somewhere with a 95 and somewhere with a 300. If I'm looking at vertex form again, I'm looking at this. Where H and K are actually the values of the vertex, so that would be the x and y. But what you might notice is that the h has a negative in front of it. So when I look for my values and when I'm converting it back to the vertex, the k is, you either say it's k is okay or k is mk, okay, whatever you want to do, mk. Okay. So since the k value would be 300, my y value for my vertex would be 300. So you could say okay or you could say mk. Okay. For h, you'll notice that it's negative. So when we have a negative in front of a number, it actually changes the sign, of course. You already know that. But what that means for the vertex is it's not what you would expect. You would think that negative h would be, if we were to make this into a xy, it would be over here somewhere. But in this vertex form, because of the negative, it's the opposite. So in order to remember that, I always just say, what the h? And of course, h is for heck. What the h? Because it's all messed up. It's going the wrong direction. It should be a minus and over here, but it's not. So this is actually plus, and I'm looking for the number here, and it would be 95. So I have a vertex at 95 and 300. That all works out great. Um, it's upside down, so this one's really sort of meeting all the criteria that I'm looking to do. So I guess the only thing left to do is go in and take a look at what S would be. That way I can get a feel for you know, just that confidence that I need to move forward. Since I'm able to use my calculator, I will. I'm going to deal with the distributive property first, and then I'll go back and deal with the negative. So this times this does give me x squared and then x times negative 300 here and for the last part it's negative 95 times negative 300 and you may think like well it says x minus 95 what's wrong with you 
if the relationship between the terms is addition subtraction I would say it's x minus because that falls into the right setup but once I start changing the relationship between the terms to multiply and divide then I can treat it as a negative so let's do that over here obviously I started it which is really big that's a big number combine these two together then I'm going to apply the negative so I just essentially change all the signs I'm just distributing out here here and here so this becomes negative this becomes positive and this becomes negative well, what do I do now how do I tell if that's right now that I have it in standard form and by the way we've already found the right answer I'm just going through all this so if you're like I get the other part I'm done that's fine um, I can use this is standard form because I have the exponents on the variables in descending order I've got you know the ax squared plus bx plus c going on I'll use negative b over 2a to find the line of symmetry so negative 395 divided by 2 negative 395 divided by 2 gives me a axis of symmetry of negative 197 which would be way over here so S is not correct so I can go with P really I probably could have stopped with the last one there but sometimes it's nice to check choose your own adventure on that I'm sure that if you have time you could do it but if you're running out of time if you confirm that it's this one it probably is so there you go